No bombs, no factories, no resource extraction. On Macquarie Island, a remote island in the Southern Ocean, disaster began with creatures so small that hardly anyone noticed. Mice. The mice didn't arrive with fanfare, they simply followed humans onto the island and stayed. At first, nothing seemed particularly unusual. Seabirds still nested, grasses still blanketed the hillsides. But over time, small changes began to add up. Vegetation weakened, soil eroded, and the island's very foundations started to crumble. When humans intervened to deal with the mice, they believed they were repairing the ecosystem. But reality was ironic. With every intervention, new problems emerged, larger and harder to control. So where does the real issue lie? How could such tiny mice cause the collapse of an entire ecosystem? Let's join TerranWorks right now to uncover the answer. Before the mice set foot on the island, Macquarie Island was a completely different world. Located more than 1,500 kilometers south of Tasmania in one of the coldest and most turbulent seas on the planet, Macquarie Island stretches about 34 kilometers, small and isolated, so remote it was almost cut off from the rest of the Earth. For thousands of years, there were no forests, no native mammals, and virtually no trace of humans. And it was this isolation that shaped the island's entire ecosystem. Tussock grass grew thick and tall, overhead height, spreading across the hillsides like a living carpet, holding soil and rainwater firmly in place against the relentless cold winds of the southern ocean. Among them stood giant megaherbs, Plants evolved to withstand salty mist, strong winds, and harsh climates, rising like green pillars from the bare landscape. On this foundation, seabirds ruled the island. Petrels, albatrosses, and king penguins nested densely, digging burrows across hills and along the coast. No foxes, no stoats, no cats. Throughout their evolution, the birds of Macquarie Island had never needed to fear the ground. The entire ecosystem was built upon a silent but absolute assumption the ground was safe. And it was that very assumption that would later become the island's fatal weakness. In the early 19th century, seal hunting ships began to arrive at Macquarie Island. Along with the humans came tools, goods, and some uninvited passengers, rats and mice. They hid in ship holds and cargo crates, then disembarked onto the island without encountering any obstacles. For rodents, Macquarie Island was like a paradise laid open. No land predators, food everywhere. A cool, stable climate, perfect for year-round breeding. The mice quickly spread, infiltrating nesting grounds, bird burrows, and thick grasslands. They began eating bird eggs, chicks, insects, and seeds, small but crucial links in the ecosystem. For bird species that had evolved over thousands of years without the need to defend against ground predators, this was the first blow to the island's ecological foundation. Yet at the time, the disaster hadn't fully revealed itself. Seabirds were still abundant. Vegetation still held on. The ecosystem was weakening, but hadn't collapsed. And it was this outward sense of normalcy that led humans to underestimate the danger and miss the chance to intervene early before the chain reaction truly began. Faced with the problem of mice destroying food supplies and spreading across the island, humans turned to a familiar solution, cats. In nearly every place where humans have settled, cats have been used to control rodents. Cats are predators. Mice are prey. This logic was so widespread, almost no one considered it could fail. And so, cats were introduced to Macquarie Island. On paper, it seemed like a sensible decision. No need for technology, no need for complex interventions, just a natural predator to control a harmful species. But what humans didn't account for was that Macquarie Island was unlike anywhere else. When the cats arrived, they didn't enter a typical ecosystem. They entered a world that had never experienced land-based predation. The seabirds here didn't know fear. They didn't fly away when danger approached. They had no evasive reflexes, no defensive strategies, and from that moment on, the problem was no longer just mice. A new, more dangerous threat had quietly emerged. As soon as cats arrived on Macquarie Island, 
The familiar logic between cat and mouse didn't play out the way humans had expected. Reality quickly veered in another direction. The cats didn't focus on the mice. They found easier prey, seabirds. On this island, mice were quick, nocturnal, and knew how to hide in the thick grass. Seabirds, on the other hand, were slow, nested in the open, and had never evolved to fear land-based predators. For the cats, the choice was obvious. They began hunting birds, not just to survive, but because prey was always abundant. It's estimated that cats killed around 60,000 seabirds on the island every year. This was no longer about individual losses. It was a steady erosion that could wipe out entire species. The flightless Macquarie Rail went completely extinct. The Macquarie Parakeet vanished before it could even be properly studied. While bird populations collapsed, the mice endured, and in some ways, even benefited, as ecological pressure shifted elsewhere. Instead of restoring balance, the control measure had pushed the ecosystem even further from its original state. With Macquarie Island's ecosystem already disrupted by mice and cats, another decision was made, this time driven by what was seen as a humanitarian intent. In 1878, humans released rabbits onto the island with a simple purpose. If sailors were ever shipwrecked, they would have a food source to survive. In theory, it was a reasonable act. But in reality, Macquarie Island once again proved that it didn't follow the familiar logic of human systems. The rabbits entered an environment with no natural predators, dense vegetation, and a cool climate ideal for year-round breeding. There was no competition, no control, and they multiplied at a rate far beyond expectations. By 1968, the rabbit population was estimated at over 100,000. But the problem didn't stop there. As cats, the only species that had unintentionally helped control the rabbit population, began to be eradicated through official campaigns, the rabbits lost their only ecological check. Their numbers exploded even further, surpassing 300,000. At that point, the disaster entered a new phase. No longer a slow hidden erosion, the ecosystem of Macquarie Island began to collapse on a broad scale. And this time, the consequences could not be ignored. Unlike mice or cats, rabbits didn't target birds. But they attacked something even more critical, the physical foundation of the island. As their numbers skyrocketed, rabbits began to consume everything within reach. The tussock grasses that once held soil and rainwater in place were grazed down to nothing. The giant mega herbs were eaten from leaf to root. And when food grew scarce, rabbits dug into the ground in search of what little remained. Gradually, the protective layer of vegetation disappeared. With no roots to hold the soil and no natural structures to absorb rainfall, every storm, every strong wind stripped away more of the island. Hillsides began to collapse, earth and rock slid into the sea, leaving behind barren, degraded land that could not recover. It's estimated that around 40% of Macquarie Island's vegetation was completely destroyed during this period. The ecosystem didn't just decline biologically, it began to collapse physically. This is what made Macquarie Island such a rare case. Few places on Earth have been so drastically altered by invasive species, not just in terms of lost biodiversity, but in the very shape of the land itself. In September 2006, the disaster reached its peak. At Lusitania Bay, right next to one of the most important breeding grounds for king penguins, a massive landslide struck without warning. Soil and rock from the hillside above gave way, sweeping down and taking everything in its path. Hundreds of penguins were buried alive in a matter of moments. There were no warning signs, no chance of escape. This was no longer about disturbed nests or gradual population decline. It was a direct, visible, and undeniable loss. The event quickly drew international media attention. For scientists and conservation authorities, it marked a turning point. Macquarie Island's ecosystem had crossed the threshold beyond which nature could recover on its own. What had been unfolding quietly over decades now revealed itself through tangible, devastating consequences. The penguins, an emblem of the Southern Ocean, became the clearest evidence of a century-long chain of mistakes where well-intentioned interventions had gradually pushed an entire ecosystem to the brink of collapse.
Looking back at everything that unfolded on Macquarie Island, scientists gradually came to realize that this wasn't a series of isolated incidents. What happened was an ecological chain reaction, where each change in one link triggered consequences across the entire system. Mice came first, quietly weakening the ecosystem's foundation by eating bird eggs, insects, and seeds. Cats were introduced to control the mice, but ended up decimating seabird populations, species that played a key role in transferring nutrients from the ocean to the land. When cats were removed, rabbits, already booming, lost all ecological pressure and wiped out the island's vegetation. By then, the ecosystem had not only declined biologically, but had begun collapsing physically as well. What's striking is that none of these decisions were made with harmful intent. On the contrary, each intervention was aimed at solving an immediate problem. But it was the piecemeal approach, lacking a comprehensive perspective, that sent the ecosystem into an unstoppable downward spiral. From this, major debates erupted in the conservation world. To what extent should humans intervene? And can an ecosystem, once pushed this far, ever truly return to its original state? After decades of watching the ecosystem deteriorate, by 2007, scientists and authorities were left with few options. If partial interventions continued, Macquarie Island would keep declining. If nothing was done, the island faced total ecological collapse. In the end, a drastic decision was made. Eliminate all invasive species, leaving not a single individual behind. It became one of the most controversial decisions in the history of modern conservation. The campaign cost over $24 million, spanned several years, and forced humans to deploy methods never before used at such a large scale. Rabbits were controlled using a rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus. Over 300 tons of poisoned bait were dropped from helicopters during winter, when seabirds had left the island. Specially trained detection dogs were brought in to track down every remaining mouse, rabbit, and cat. A wave of backlash soon followed. Critics raised ethical concerns, questioned the risk of secondary ecological impacts, and even asked whether humans were simply repeating the same mistakes. But for those making the call, inaction was not an option. They could not stand by and watch the island collapse. At this point, it was no longer about idealistic conservation. It was about managing an ecological crisis. On April 8, 2014, after years of continuous monitoring, Macquarie Island was officially declared free of invasive species. For many scientists, this was only the beginning. What truly surprised them was what happened next. Recovery didn't begin with birds or humans, it began with the soil. Seeds that had lain dormant in the ground for decades, perhaps even longer, began to sprout. Tussock grass returned, gradually covering the barren hillsides, anchoring the soil and slowing erosion. As the physical foundation stabilized, seabirds returned far more quickly than early forecasts had predicted. The return of the birds wasn't just symbolic. Their droppings enriched the soil, fueling vegetation growth, and triggering a positive feedback loop the ecosystem had lost for decades. Some seabird populations recorded growth rates of up to 10% per year, a rare figure in conservation biology. In less than a decade, Macquarie Island recovered faster than even the most optimistic scenarios had imagined. Not because of a miracle, but because once the invasive pressures were removed, the ecosystem still had the strength to heal itself. Much faster than humans had believed possible. Macquarie Island is not just a story about mice, cats, or rabbits. It's a story about the limits of human understanding when intervening in complex ecosystems. A small mistake, if approached with short-term thinking, can trigger a chain of consequences that lasts for centuries. But at the same time, it also proves the opposite. When humans act with determination, patience, and science-based decisions, nature still has the power to recover, sometimes faster than even the most optimistic predictions. What do you think is the lesson from Macquarie Island? How can we tell where the line is between healing and over-intervention? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep exploring with Terran Works 
on future journeys.